All right, guys, in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the P53 Enfield. It's 577 caliber rifled musket, and this is an original Parker Field and Sons that was used by the Confederate States of America in the Civil War. And the only way to take a really good objective look at the musket is to be like this in full regalia because the musket was part of the entire kit that the soldier wore because of the very nature of it being a, a musket, a muzzle loader, uh, you had to have accoutrements. So it was very much a part of the whole system. So to take an accurate look at it, we're gonna have to present you the entire system. So what you're looking at here is my, the most common Confederate outfit that I wear for reenacting. I do Texas reenacting. I live in Texas, so we reenact Texas units, uh, the fourth and the fifth Texas. And our uniforms were typically the jean wool with the black trim, as you can see around the collar, around the wrist, as you can see here. So we'll take a look at my accoutrements that I'm wearing. The guys from Texas, they had to supply their own knapsacks and their own haversacks most of the time. The government didn't supply them. So you're looking at a standard you know, knapsack here. It's made out of a uh, cow's hide with the hair still on it. It's just a typical bag. Inside that knapsack is a blanket, a poncho, personal items like, you know, a comb, a mirror, stuff to shave with, some candles, a candle holder, uh, things to clean your musket with, uh, just personal items like that, and then some food. And then as a reenactor, you would typically carry extra cartridges in there because you don't have the support services of the army behind you. So that's typically what goes in there. Uh, then you have your belt here, which is gonna hold all the trappings off of you. This is at a time in history when they didn't have harnesses for anything, the gear didn't all clean together. What you had was, is everything had its own belt, as you can see, and then it would tie together with the belt that went around your waist. And you would need to wear it high because you needed to be able to access your cap pouch. And the belt worn up high keeps everything together more when you're running and whatnot. You are uh, a lot less likely to lose something or have something go dragging. So you gotta make sure you wear your belt up high. Um, another thing you'll notice is I have my baldric here. Uh, I have different items here from all different time periods, uh, which would have been pretty common, especially in Texas. You would have had people that were using the gear that maybe their fathers or their grandfathers used in previous wars. So because of that, I'm kind of a hodgepodge. It wouldn't be that way with the uh, with the federal troops, but with the Confederate troops, there was definitely a lot less standardization. Um, canteen, I have a wooden canteen because you can use it across a bunch of different time periods. Uh, they're real nice. These typically come with a cotton strap, uh, but I replaced mine with a leather strap. So, and then of course, integral to firing the musket, you have your cartridge box and your cap pouch. So. And then uh, your camp knife. This is just a standard camp knife. Use it for cutting food, eating, all kinds of stuff. Um, last thing that I think I forgot to mention was the bayonet. The bayonet's held here. And then this is a belt knife. You never pull these at reenactments. The only time this has ever been used at reenactment is to, to uh, chop stuff for like shelter halves. So now that we've gone over the basic gear, this is what you'd see me in if you ever run across me at the reenactment. Let's. Uh, Let's load up this musket and take a few shots at various ranges with all of the gear on because 90% of the time, this is how a soldier in the Civil War would be fighting. They typically had everything on them that they were gonna be carrying. They didn't drop packs and then fight because there was a good possibility if you did that, you wouldn't get your stuff back. So it did happen some of the time and the army supply wagon, of course, or supply train would take care of a lot of that stuff. But a lot of time, you fought with what you had, you kept it on you at all times, or you would never see it again. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's quit talking and let's start shooting.
Now at this point, typically, is where you would come to the shoulder and you would wait for the officer to give out whatever order it was gonna be. He'd make sure everybody was loaded and then, you know, it would be any number of different firing uh, orientations, but you would wait for the officer. For the purposes of this video, it's just me. We're gonna go ahead and shoot. Original Confederate Enfield. All right, guys, let's go take a look at the target and see how we did. All right, guys, as you can see, we got all five rounds on target. Not bad for the old infield. One, two, three, four, five. And that's, you know, standing, full regalia. I have all my kit on me right now. I could literally walk onto a reenactment right now and be good for three days. I have three days worth of gear on me, tent, everything, poncho, blanket, you name it, I got it. Carrying everything, and we got that kind of a group. Not bad, not bad at all with this old Parker Field and Sons Confederate import. So let's uh, let's scoot back a little bit, and uh, let's see what it's capable of doing a little farther out. All right, guys, let's take a few more shots a little farther out. We're gonna shoot the paper a couple times, and then we'll move over to that Yankee Steel. Remember, this is an original, 1853, used in the Civil War, and it's well used, so who knows what it's seen. Kind of cool to sit and think about, actually. Alright guys, this is going to be the last shot. Uh, the musket fouled out a little quicker than I was prepared for today, so we're not going to be able to take any more shots. Um, next time I'll bring some cleaning equipment. The inside of this thing's barrel is still pretty dang rough. Um, it definitely saw some use. So, last shot for that. Let's go ahead and attach an original bayonet. And let's take a shot at that Yankee Steel. How do you like that? But you know what happens when you're just shooting out here live and this thing's pretty much fouled out. I'm not going to be able to reload it and try again. So I appreciate you guys watching. If you like to see more videos like this, please hit like and subscribe. I will have more videos out here testing original gear and reproduction. And also stay tuned for more reviews specific to the uniform. I have uh, some reviews on just uniform specific gear, uh, good places to buy it all that kind of thing coming out very shortly and uh, like I said if you want to find out more go over to murphysmuskets.com go to facebook.com slash murphysmuskets also check out uh, Twitter and Instagram I upload to Twitter and Instagram every day thanks for watching guys and we'll see you all later